Terracoach.com. Toric IOL planning in a small eye. Let's go over some of these steps. So first thing is marking our steep meridian. And in this patient, it's 50 degrees, 5 zero. The black ink marks on the cornea are the cardinal meridians of 0 and 90. And then we're just marking using a Mendez gauge here, approximately the 50 degree meridian, because that's where we're going to place this lens. We certainly have in our Beverly Hills Surgery Center the fanciest equipment. So we're able to use intraoperative aberrometry. We're used, able to use special overlays that show you the corneal stigmatism in the surgeon oculars. But for the benefit of the rest of the world, which may not have access to this very expensive equipment, let's just show you a traditional way as well. So we've filled the eye with our anesthetic. Here comes our dispersive viscoelastic. It's a shallow AC. It's very hard for me to come all the way across it. This patient's going to get a 29.5 diopter lens, very short axial length. So now we need to make that incision on the steep axis. So we need to rotate the speculum. Then rotate the speculum, adjust our microscope as well. If we operate on that steep axis, we're going to help the astigmatism, of course. Plus, more importantly, we're not going to change the direction of the astigmatism. Remember, astigmatism is a vector which has magnitude and direction. If you make your incision on the steep axis, ideally, or even on the flat axis, you'll change its magnitude, but you won't change its direction. If, however, you make your incision somewhere else, like if I made my incision here at 180 degrees instead, I would change not only the magnitude of the astigmatism, I'd change its direction. And that makes it problematic. So here we're measuring out very carefully. We're going to do a 5 millimeter capsorexis. Interestingly, this patient has an odd anatomy, a very large corneal white-to-white -white diameter, a very shallow anterior chamber, a very flat cornea. AC depth in the pre-op exam was less than 2 millimeters. And even now, it's still very shallow. We've achieved our 5 millimeter rexus. And you see we have our incision on that steep axis. Now, we've slightly enlarged the incision here uh, to about 2.4 millimeters. And that's going to be perfect for the phaco tip. So we've got our nucleus hydrodissected, a little more viscoelastic to protect that central corneal endothelium. Here comes the phaco sleeve, the phaco tip, and we're going to use our chopper. Now, we're not going to prolapse the nucleus in this case. There's just not enough room in the anterior chamber. So we'll buzz in with the phaco probe, and the chopper goes in, and we're going to separate the nucleus and chop it into two halves. Now we can bring the first half up, first half up to the iris plane, emulsify it nice and slowly, staying right there in the center of the cornea, away from the endothelium, or mostly at the iris plane. And then we've got the second half of the nucleus coming up as well, and we'll make short work of it. So fortunately in this case, the cataract is not very dense. This patient doesn't have the best dilation. There's been a history of chronic pilocarpine use many years ago, and that's resulted in this relatively meiotic pupil. But luckily, the 5mm dilation is sufficient for us to complete this case. We'll now use the cortex uh, removal with the IA probe. I want to clean this up as well. Now, the marks on the toric IOL are at about the 5mm zone, the toric marks. Remember, it's a 6mm optic, and you have those toric marks. So as long as we have about a 5mm pupil, we should be good. We should be able to easily see our marks on the toric lens, and that's going to, of course, help with alignment. Alignment here is critical. We are showing you the whole case start to finish. I know it's an investment of eight minutes for you, but I think it's well worth the investment, especially if you're just starting off using toric lenses. So everything's cleaned up. Caps are back. Looks great. And now it's time to load up the lens and fill the anterior chamber and the caps are bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. There's a good fill. That looks pretty good to me. And let's see the lens. The lens is going to be, um, again, patient's highly hyperopic. So we'll first enlarge the incision. This requires a larger B cartridge. So we enlarge the incision to about 3 millimeters. Again, that's going to help with the astigmatism because it's on the steep axis. Here's why we enlarged it. The lens is 29.5 diopters. 
three adopters of cylinder correction on the IOL. That lens is very thick. This lens is safest through the B cartridge. B like boy. And that's a bigger cartridge that does require a three millimeter incision. So we enlarged our incision there. Now we'll place the IOL inside the capsule bag. And we're gonna rotate it and place it about one or two clock hours before our intended axis. And that's because this lens rotates very easily clockwise, not so much counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. For a torque lens, get behind the eye wall optic, you have to remove all the viscoelastic. If you leave any viscoelastic on the posterior surface of the eye well, it'll cause it to become slippery and it may change its intended position. You may have it malrotate. So very important, remove all that viscoelastic from the posterior surface of the eye well. We'll also clean out all the viscoelastic from the anterior segment. And now it's time to get the lens rotated. So we can rotate the lens here, just a little bit more, and we can rotate the other way as well. I'm using a device that's projecting in my oculars, this, uh, an overlay of where the exact desired axis is. That's not shown here in the video, but again, if we simply line up these torque lens marks of the IOL with the torque marks that we've made on the cornea and the steep meridian, it's gonna be spot on. And so we're doing that, looks great. Getting the lens lined up and just tapping it into place. So the very end here, we just do a little small movements, just barely tapping it. Again, we don't wanna over rotate it because then we'd have to go all the way back around. So we do just a little by little. This lens material is a little bit tacky, so wherever we leave it, it tends to stick to the caps or bag. So let's hydrate up the incision here. This looks great, and that's gonna seal up beautifully. And this is the patient's second eye. The first eye had a fantastic result, so we're very confident in our lens calculations. The first eye got a 29 Doppler lens, and this eye's getting a 29 and a half. So sealing it up, and we're looking great. Checking the pressure here, checking the orientation of the lens. The lens looks great. This patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. So there's a torque lens, start to finish, in a very small hyperopic eye. This is something that certainly any of our viewers can learn to master. Just give it a little bit of time and patience. At the end here, let's just absolutely make sure that the incision is totally watertight. And we double check it. If the incision leaks just a little bit, it may cause malrotation of the eye well. The AC can slowly collapse, then refill, and all of a sudden the eye well is a different meridian. So be very careful. Make sure the incision is totally sealed. Beautiful case. Thanks for watching. I trust you've learned a lot.